Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We are landing shortly at Mazar Sharif Airport. Please fasten your seatbelts and observe the no smoking sign. Welcome to the world's most unlikely budget airline. This is Calm Air, Afghanistan's latest foray into capitalism, now ferrying an army of passengers between the country's major cities for as little as $20 as well as nearby international destinations on a fleet of 737s. Despite a major crash last year, business is booming for the airline because flights are cheaper than the tortuous day-long land journeys on Afghanistan's highways. Karma is planning to expand operations to Frankfurt and London. The calm in Karm Air is this man, Asmarai Karmgar, Afghanistan's take on Stelios. Here in the city of Mazari Sharif at one of his many palaces, you can now see Afghanistan's famous rugged terrain, or at least a concrete replica of Mr. Kamgar's favourite mountain view that he's building in the garden, complete with his favourite fauna from the Hindu Kush, a private neverland for northern Afghanistan. The world should see the other side of Afghanistan. We also like nice things. We appreciate beauty and art. For 30 years, Mr. Kamgar has ducked, dived and traded loyalties, making money under every regime from the Russians to the Taliban and now to Mr. Karzai's pro-Western government. We are Afghans. We are free thinkers. We don't want to be attached to any ideology that's imposed on us. Politics is not our trade. But any government who comes to power has to deal with us, the entrepreneurs. Every corporate mogul needs a shiny HQ. From here at his gleaming new building in Kabul, Mr. Kamgar runs a business empire stretching from construction to importing luxuries. He started up Kam Air immediately after the fall of the Taliban in 2002. His planes, alongside the government-run Ariana's, were the first commercial flights here in a decade. His latest project, a gas refinery in the north, will be the first to purify imported Uzbek gas from a new pipeline, also built by him. The government doesn't really like the private sector. Sometimes they feel they want to destroy us and control everything themselves. But the harder they try, the more stubborn we become. For example, the transport minister, one day, out of the blue, decided to stop all our flights without any explanation, even though we'd been flying internationally for months. But I've overcome all that. I started this airline with just one man. Now I control the whole sector. Maintaining his influence is a full-time job. Tonight, the fake mountain range plays host for a feast for 3,500 people attending the funeral of a relative. All the good burgers of Mazar have turned up to pay respect to Mr. Kamgar's family. Mazar itself is home to this country's holiest religious site, the ancient Tomb of Ali Mosque. The hundred dollar bills are flowing here too, Afghanistan's aviation boom, ensuring that even the imams are well looked after. Mr. Kamgar just fed us very beautiful Afghan lunch, thank you very much. Even the occupying forces are obliged to show their respect. The U.S. Marine Corps here to offer thanks for help in building a new fire station at their main northern base in neighboring Balkh. Afghanistan's war-ravaged infrastructure has only been haphazardly rebuilt by the Kabul government. Filling this gap has been entrepreneurs like Mr. Kamgar, paying for no less than 13 bridges on the main Salang Highway. So why is it down to him and not the government? Critics claim that billions of dollars of international aid meant to rebuild the economy and infrastructure has simply vanished, fueling popular distrust and resentment at the Kabul government. So bad have things become that one former minister says the country is mired in corruption. Today there is a mafia structure ruling Afghanistan which operates behind closed doors with only its decisions made public. Many in the government itself don't know how decisions are reached. The structure of this mafia cancer includes major government ministers, influential Afghans from inside and outside the country, as well as the key figures at the major foreign embassies and UN offices operating here. They've known each other for 30 years and have refined this mafia structure over that time. One of those the former minister accuses is President Karzai's current deputy defence minister, General Dostum, seen here in what's known as a brotherhood ceremony with US Special Forces. As leader of the Northern Alliance, 
He helped the Americans topple the Taliban and they've returned the favor. Critics say Mr. Kamgar helped fund this notorious warlord for many years, but Kamgar says he can't choose Afghanistan's rulers and needs to keep his business going. These accusations are nothing new. We were first confronted with them by the Taliban. They confiscated all my properties, but we proved them wrong and got it all back. Even those guys didn't dare keep anything. First we had Dostum, then there was the Taliban, now President Karzai. Tomorrow it'll be another person. But whoever rules Afghanistan, they need us, and we need them. Remarkably, Afghanistan is ranked by the World Bank as one of the easiest countries in the world to start a business, better even than high-tech Japan or Finland. But it's also ranked in the bottom 10% of actually being able to do business. For now, Afghanistan's first private airline is more the exception rather than the rule. So it's not just the nation's new cricket team that needs sky-high ambitions if this country is to take off economically.